Hello friends, welcome to Abhi Tutorials. As part of this lesson, we are going to look into default and rest parameters in JavaScript functions. As part of this lecture, we will cover what are function parameters, default parameters and rest parameters with examples. Let's get started. In JavaScript functions, the parameters are the arguments we pass to the function call. In the symbol add function as given here, the arguments a and b are the parameters to the function add. Normally, when you call the function as highlighted here, you will have to pass two corresponding values to the function call and each value by their order will be mapped to their respective parameter. That is 5 will be mapped to a and 6 will be mapped to b. Then the processing will be done on the values and result will be returned. Now, when we run this program from the terminal, we will get the result as expected. But what happens when user forgets to pass a value during the function call? For example, consider the highlighted line as given here, where the function call has only one value passed. Run the program again and you will see NAN displayed. This result may vary based upon the values used and operation performed in the function. So how to avoid this? The answer is to use default function parameter values. This is introduced in ES6 version of JavaScript. So in our existing function definition parameters section, we will add an equal next to our parameters. Here I have added it only to the parameter b. Now when I run the code again, we will get the output for the second function call as 5. Default function parameter is not limited to the second or the last parameter. We can add it to any parameter within the parameter section of the function definition. Here I have added default value as 0 to the first parameter a as well. Now if we call the function without any arguments, it will work as well. Let me run the function now. As you can see the function call has been executed successfully with both the parameters set to be default parameter. To implement it, we use a concept introduced in ES6 version of JavaScript known as the REST parameters. The REST parameters has nothing to do with the REST API. The REST parameter is a special syntax that is introduced in ES6 version of JavaScript. This allows a JavaScript function to accept unspecified number of arguments as parameters. The unspecified parameters will be stored as an array with a specific naming convention that starts with three dots. Let's see an example. In the example given here, if we call the add function by passing two values, two and three as given here, and then run the function, we will get the result as 5, which is the sum of values we have passed to the parameters a and b. But what if we have another value that is 6 added as an additional value to the function call? Where will it be stored and how to access it? And what if even more numbers are passed as function call values? How do we access such parameters? This is where our rest parameter comes in picture. Back in our function definition parameter list, in addition to the existing parameters a and b, we will introduce a new parameter called c. Since c is going to be the rest parameter, we will prefix three dots in front of c. As you can see, we have added three dots in front of the parameter c. So c has now become the rest parameter. So now the value 2 will go to a, 3 will go to b and rest other values will be stored to the rest variable c. The rest variable c will always be an array and you will have to access the content of c like you access any other arrays. For example, c of 0 will have the value 6, c of 1 will have 5 and so on. Back to our function, if we execute the code now, we will receive the same result 5 as we still didn't use the rest parameter array within our code. To use the rest parameter as well, we will first remove the return statement. As here, we will create a new variable named sum and set it as 0. Then we will use the array function for each function on the rest variable c. That will iterate through the array elements i and store the sum of the elements in the sum variable. Since we need to add a and b as well, to include the first two values 2 and 3, we will add an additional statement as given here. 
That will add A and B to the sum variable that is already calculated from the above for each. Finally, we will return the sum. To validate whether the program works, we will run the program again. And we will get the expected output as given here. That ends our topic today. Thanks for watching our video and stay tuned. Thank you.